Hello and welcome to Coffee and Conversation here on BTCN. I'm your host, Shashank Bengali, and I'm here with Feng Ru Lin. She's one of the co-founders of Turtle Tree, a startup that's developing lab-based dairy products right here in Singapore. Feng Ru, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to start by asking you a bit about just the dairy market, both kind of globally and also here in, in Southeast Asia. What does it look like, you know, pre-pandemic, what kind of consumption we're we looking at for dairy? A lot of people might not know, but dairy is actually the largest food segment in the world. It's currently about $720 billion, uh, with the global dairy output of over 800 million tons. So um, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, more than 6 billion people worldwide consume milk products daily, and that's slightly more than 75% of the world population. How much greener is lab-based milk? Obviously, a lot of uh, investment goes into developing it. Are we talking about in the near term, uh, you know, perhaps marginal, but then, you know, really great uh, gains in the future in terms of environmental impact? Sure, it's found that cellular agriculture as a whole um, creates 78 to 96 percent less greenhouse gases than conventionally um, produced meat and uses um, about 82 percent less water than conventionally produced meat. Um, obviously, it's also 99 percent less land use as well. If we're just able to um, replace or, or take up 5 percent um, of the global dairy market, we're looking at um, saving the land mass of um, 15 New York cities every day and, and a whole ton of water and, and a lot of other resources. As we all know, um, global methane emissions take up 37% um, um, of global methane emissions. We want to be able to alleviate um, animal suffering, uh, promote sustainability, and with the next billion to three billion people coming onto the planet over the next 20 years, we need to have alternative sources of milk to be able to feed everyone. And give us a bit of a sense of the science. Walk us through how you create uh, uh, lab-based milk and how long it takes and, and what the process is. For any milk, say human or cow, um, within three hours of the milk being expressed uh, by the cow, there are actually live cells in the milk itself. So um, we're able to extract these cells and then multiply them um, in, into a large number. And these cells would then act like little biofactories. So what we're doing is we are replicating what happens inside a human breast or a cow udder, but really we're just doing it outside of the animal body and putting it in a, in a giant steel bioreactor. So then what are the limitations or the, or the constraints in, in growing the milk in, in the lab? Is it a question of time or space or, or what, are, what are the factors that go into it? The challenges for the entire cell-based meat industry, not limited to just um, turtle tree labs or cell-based milk, is really the growth factors that are being used to multiply these cells. So th these growth factors, you can think of it like a nutrient soup that the cells require to be able to multiply. So currently on the market, um, the, these uh, factors are extremely expensive because they were built for the pharmaceutical industry. So it sounds like you face some of the same constraints as, as you say, as lab-based meat does. Did the lab-based meat come first or, or why do you think that maybe we've not heard as much about lab-based dairy until now? We've got, um, say, meat and milk 1.0. That is where the cows are producing the, the, the milk. That's when we're, we're eating real animals. And then there is the um, agri 2.0. So basically that is the plant-based options um, that taste and feel exactly like the same thing, but nutritionally is a bit different uh, because they come from plants. However, when it comes to making the high value byproducts like cheese, butter, yogurt, cream, you need the entire composition of real milk. And you can't necessarily do that with oatly or, or, or soy milk uh, because the composition is different. Uh, the functionality is also very different. And although milk is a $700 billion industry, uh, the plant-based uh, segment takes up quite a small percentage at the moment. And for us, uh, Milk 3.0 is really being able to create the entire composition of milk, the fats, the carbohydrates, the proteins, and allowing this milk to, to perform just like real milk. Um, and that's where Turtle Tree Labs come in. There are 2,000 different components inside um, a glass of milk. So to be able to characterize everything um, would be a journey. And we, we foresee that to happen probably in about two to three years time. Um, in the meantime, we want to go to market as soon as possible with these uh, human milk components. You know, there's a perception that Asian countries, Asian consumers don't uh, take as much dairy. Sounds like that's probably not accurate. 
if you look at Asia, a lot of uh, people are, are concerned about their heart, their health, things like gut health, uh, things like immunity, especially during these COVID times. Um, there is a big spotlight on functional foods and functional ingredients. And that's where Turtle Tree is playing a great role um, in, uh, in pushing these uh, products forward. And so when you're talking about a product that 6 billion people already consume, what are the growth markets? Our technology allows us to create milk from all mammals. So it could be goats, sheep, camels, cows, and even humans. So, so talking to big um, global dairy companies, this is the area that they have most interest in because it can really help to increase the, uh, the functional benefits of current products, current yogurts, uh, current pro prebiotic, probiotic drinks. And that's where Total Tree is focused on. Um, we, we are coming out this year as, uh, as defining a new category. We're defining a category of human milk for all humans. And that's where we believe uh, the biggest value is. So you really see the market opportunity um, in not just creating um, new uh, or recruiting new consumers, but really um, getting consumers to consume existing dairy to switch to, to turtle tree, to lab-based dairy. We, we see ourselves as being a supplement uh, to, to current industry. Some of the largest dairy conglomerates, the Fonterras, the Nestle's of the world, we see them as partners. We want to work with them and allow our ingredients into and put our ingredients into their current offerings to increase the nutrition and functionality of these uh, products and really help to provide um, end consumers an option for human milk components. There are companies out there uh, who have been talking about different components in milk, but Turtle Tree would be the front runner um, in this entire category of uh, human milk for humans. So you don't see it as like an affordable luxury product, um, for example. You, you want to see this as being able to compete on the shelf with, with conventional milk. We don't necessarily think uh, we, we want to be too much more expensive than the current products out there. Really, the value where we see our product is the, is the human milk components because these um, complex sugars, these bioactive proteins have a lot more um, functionality than just um, perhaps whey and casein. And uh, these can be added as, as um, ingredients for current products. Thank you so much, Feng Ru. It's really been fascinating talking with you. That's all the time we have, unfortunately, but I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us as well here on Coffee and Conversation on BTCN. I'm Shashank Bengali, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you guys.